Anion Haseo, turn on Irene Inmita. <laughs> that was okay, right? Okay. Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, it is a pleasure for me to be here today. So we are going to keep on talking about Bordetella and I'm going to, be, uh, to have the chance to share with you some of the trials and, and information that we have for rinsing under field conditions. So we will have two different parts of the presentation. First, we will talk about the disease, and then we will talk about Rinisen. So first of all, we have already talked about this. So Bordetella bronchiseptica is the responsible of the non-progressive atrophic rhinitis. This is what you will probably see in your farms whenever we have this disease. And what is, it will be coughing, sneezing, and probably we will also see animals bleeding. And the reason why we are seeing those clinical signs is because we have these lesions. Bordetella is producing a dermonecrotoxin that is destroying the bones of the noses. So instead of seeing this complete structure of the nose and the butterflies, that how we call this structure, we are losing the, the complete structure of the nose when we are having Bordetella in our farms. If these animals are not co-infected with Pasteurella multocia type D, we are not going to see the clinical signs in the fattening phase. But if we have also Pasteurella multocida type D in the fattening phase, we are going to keep on seeing the disease, but in the progressive form of the disease. So this will be how we will see the disease in the fattening phase. And as you can see here, when we lose the completely structure of the nose, we have a free way to get any uh, bacteria, virus, or anything to get into our animal's lungs and respiratory system. So if we want to control atrophic rhinitis, but also other respiratory infections, we must to be sure that this structure is completely safe and is completely there. Now I'm going to show you one of the latest publications uh, under research conditions that has been published related Bordetella and Streptococcus suis. This was published in 2020 and here under experimental conditions they were doing the co-infection of Bordetella plus Streptococcus suis. So on, the, on your right side you can see just Streptococcus suis and here in my left side what we are seeing is the co-infection of Bordetella and Streptococcus suis. So as you can see here, when just the Streptococcus suis is present, Streptococcus is not really attaching into the lung. But when we have Bordetella present, Streptococcus suis is attaching into the lungs. And what is most important is that when we just have Streptococcus suis, the structure of the lungs and the cilia is present and also the suffractant. But when sorry, when we have the co-infection, this structure is destroyed. So we don't have cilia and we don't have suffractant. So this means that we are going to have other more infection respiratory problems whenever we have Bordetella presence and also obviously Streptococcus suis. And this is another example on how Bordetella could help in the co-infection with other diseases such as Glacerella parasuis. In here we have the infection with just Bordetella or Bordetella plus Glacerella and we can see that they are producing pneumonia plus rhinitis in 36% when we have the co-infection. But when we have just Glacerella we are having just 20%. And this means that when we have Bordetella first and we have the co-infection of both agents, we have an increase in the incidence of pneumonia in 80%.
So it is important to remember that Bordetella and the nose of our pigs is one of the first barrier to any respiratory problems that we will have in our farms. It is not just about Bordetella or Pasteurella mucociae type D, it's also about other infections as stars. We have seen Streptococcus suis, Glacerella parasuis, or even PERS or flu. Now we are going to show you a few trials and, and field experiences that we have with RINIS and in, in different countries worldwide. But I would like to encourage you to try it by yourself in your farms and realize how helpful is the control of atrophic rhinitis in the control of atrophic rhinitis, but also other respiratory problems. RINISE is the only registered vaccine against both progressive and non-progressive atrophic rhinitis. On the one hand, Pastorella maltosida type D is the responsible for the progressive atrophic rhinitis, most of the time co-infected with Bordetella bronchoseptica. In order to obtain recombinant Pastorella maltosida toxin, the first step is to eliminate the DNA fragment that encodes the toxic part of the protein. This recombinant DNA fragment is inserted into a plasmid. And this plasmid is then inserted into the E. coli, where the expression of large quantities of the toxin will be induced. Finally, purification via chromatography is conducted, thus eliminating the impurities from the E. coli expression vector. On the other hand, Bortadella bronchoseptica is the casual agent of non-progressive atrophic rhinitis. Bortadella is induced into the toxigenic phase and it is then inactivated. Finally, once all the components have been obtained, they are incorporated into the vaccine along with Epramune G adjuvant. So, as we have seen, Rinisen is the vaccine to control progressive and non-progressive atrophic rhinitis. So the vaccination protocol is that we are doing the vaccination in the south six and three weeks before farrowing because what we want is to achieve the immunity uh, to be transferred through the calostrum and whenever we are doing revaccination in multiparous south we will have to do it also before farrowing so we can do the immune uh, increase to transfer the immunity for the piglets. As you have seen, this is the same vaccination protocol that we have for Suisen, okay? And both vaccines, together with Arisen Parvo, share the same adjuvant. So this means that we can apply them together in order to reduce the number of injections that we are applying in our cells. So instead of applying two mLs of Rinisen, we can apply four mLs together with Suisen. So the first trial that we are going to share with you is one regarding the non-progressive atrophy rhinitis. This was done in a farrow to finish farm and we were, this farm was suffering from respiratory problems, they were positive for Bordetella and we were checking the, the nasal lesion score on those farms, those animals, sorry. So here we can see is that we are able to reduce the average nasal lesion score and this means that we are going to reduce as well the maximal level of lesion that we will have in our farm. And in fact, we are going to have a better growth performance. So those animals at the beginning and at, at the entrance of the nursery, they are going to have an average of 800 more grams per piglet. So now we are moving into Canada. This uh, trial was presented last year in, in the Lehman Congress, so in the USA, and in this case we are talking about also a farrow to finish farm, and the main characteristic of this farm is that this is an organic farm. They were free from PERS and they were not using antibiotics because they were antibiotic free as an organic farm, and they were suffering a lot of problems of, well, respiratory problems in the farm, 
they were detecting bordetella and they were have they we see that they have lesions in the snuts in the nursery phase as well in this case we were comparing the a period before and after starting vaccination and what we were able to see is that we were able to reduce the mortality in the nursery phase from 10% into 4%. And it is not just that we were reducing the mortality. What we also see is that the animals were more homogeneous, so they reduced the number of rant animals, so the animals that they stay in the, in the nursery, from 9% into 3%. So with these two trials, what we can see is that if we have a problem of bordetella in our farms, we will do in vaccination and controlling the problem means that we can reduce mortality, we can re have more homogeneous animals, and we can also improve the growth performance of those, of those animals. And this is the latest trial that we did, and we presented a few weeks ago on IPBS. And in this case, uh, it was a farm similar, I mean, similar, having a lot of problems of respiratory disease. Uh, them, and the main problem of this farm, this is, is located in Italy, is that in Europe we are under uh, a huge uh, reduction of antibiotics. And this farm was using a lot of antibiotics to control the respiratory problems. In this farm, what we did was to compare before and after starting vaccination in seven different budgets of 2,000, close to 300 uh, animals. And as you can see here, what we can see is that in the case of the animals vaccinated with Drinisen, we have a positive correlation on the average daily gain and the age of the animals. And the main problem that they have, that it was the high consumption of antibiotics, was clearly reduced in the cases of the vaccinated animals. In this farm, the return on investment was 14. So they were investing one euro and they were recovering 14. So that was the part for the non-progressive control of the disease. And we are going to talk about the progressive form of the disease. So as we have already seen with the professor, we have seen a clear reduction in the incidence of lesions when we do vaccination to control progressive atrophy rhinitis with Rinisen. So after vaccination, as you can see, we can recover the bones structure of the nose of our animals. This was another trial in the same way in order to evaluate the control or the, yeah, the control of the lesions that we have. So here what we can see is that we are able to reduce the number of samples with lesions, the number of animals showing lesions the average lesion score, and also the maximum level of grade that we would have in the farm. So in this trial, the average lesion grade was reduced from close to 5 into 1.5. And what we know also is that the more vaccination we do in our farms, the lower lesion we will have in our animals. So this is an example. This was also a trial that we present a couple of weeks in IPBS 2002. So in this farm, before starting release and vaccination, 150%, I mean, half of the animals were showing moderate lesions. But when we are starting, sorry, when we are starting the use of Rinisen, we are starting to, to see no lesions at all. And more and more, after two years of vaccination, the number of no lesions and mild lesions were the higher one. And this is important to, to have this in mind because when we are starting vaccination in our half farms against atrophy rhinitis, we cannot expect a instant seeing the benefit. The benefit will be seen whenever we have a, a homogeneous status of immunity in the whole herd. And the more we vaccinate, the lower the pressure of infection will be. So the better the results we will have in our farms. This was another trial we did here in Korea. And here we were taking the national score and we were evaluating the body weight in animals at six weeks old. So as you can see here, in the cases of the lower, uh, this, this is the vaccinated animals. So the lower the nasal score, the better body weight we have. 
And this pattern is maintained in all the farms that we check. So if we move in, this, in these farms, we move also into the finishers. So what we can see as well as when we reduce the nasal score, the number of days that those animals stay in the farm is lower. And it was seen also in the three farms that we check. And depending on the farm, the return on investment is different, right? And we are going to the final trial that we, we, we are going to introduce to you, to present to you. And this is related not just about atrophic and non-progressive progressive atrophic united, but also how Rinisen could help you in the control of Streptococcus suis. We, we haven't put it there, but this was published in, in the last ESPHM, so the Congress that we have in Europe uh, this year, a few months ago. This farm is located in Spain. They have uh, in between 3 and 5% of mortality associated with Streptococcus suis. They use a lot of amoxicillin in order to control the problem, and they were also positive for bordetella and they were negative for pasteurella. So here, this is the sample size, and what we can see is that when we are talking about mortality associated with meningitis, so in fact, Streptococcus suis, we are able to reduce from 0.3 into 0.07. This means a reduction in 80%. And we can also correlate this with the result of the diagnosis that we did with our RINITEC, our diagnostic tool. So here you can see that in the control group there was more positivity related with Bordetella bronchiseptica compared to the, non, to the vaccinated group. So the control of Bordetella is helping us to control Streptococcus suis infection as well. So I do not have a slide of the conclusions because I would like to, as I said before, encourage you to try Rinisen if you are not using it yet, to see which is the benefit in the reduction of antibiotics, the, reduction, the improvement of the growth performance, and also the control of other diseases such as Streptococcus suis, flu, pers, or any respiratory disease that you could have in your farm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.